Our guest today on Take Command is half of the very popular Odyssey podcast, Reception Perception. Uh, this podcast actually predates the Odyssey family, and we were lucky enough to have it join our crew here at 2400 Sports and Odyssey. Matt Harmon uh, is the originator of the show. He, and uh, Matt, I will let you describe. Well, first of all, welcome. Hello. Thanks for thanks for joining us. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate you boys having me. Yeah, I'm excited to talk today. <laughs> Absolutely. So how did you like, how would you describe what your podcast is? Yeah, so I think the way to dis- describe it is like James and I, we, we try to just cover the wide receiver position uh, in depth because of the work that I do called Reception Perception, hence Reception Perception, the show. So uh, Reception Perception was the series uh, that I came up with back in 2013 is when I started working on this. Uh, so with the better part of the last decade and what Really, uh, you know, I was I'm still a nobody, but at the time was definitely a, a nobody kind of trying <laughs> to break into this football media scene. Um, and, and I was like, you know what? I need to come up with a, an idea that stands out. Right. And for me, it was I want to answer the biggest question I have about football. And for me, that was the wide receiver position. Uh, I was I was never equipped to play wide receiver growing up. Let's just put it that way from a body type perspective. But for <laughs> me, I was like, you know, we we. I mean, and obviously, Logan, you'll, you'll definitely be able to, to speak to this. It's like when you're running routes and, and things like that, you know, you're, you're doing your job, you're executing your assignment, but you might be lucky to get like eight to 10 targets a game. I mean, that's a lot, but you're running like 30 plus routes a game at times. I'm like, these guys need to be getting credit for what they're doing when the football doesn't go their way. Right. So that's what I came up with reception perception over an eight game sample for NFL players. I go in and chart every single route that they run, how often they get open uh, against each type of coverage, how often they, how often they get open against man, zone, press, et cetera. Really trying to not just discover kind of how good these guys are a- away from factors that they cannot control, but also like kind of trying to bucket wide receivers into types because obviously you, you play three different positions on the field, whether you're the slot, you're the X, you're the flanker, and then you can go deeper than that. And really just, again, trying to paint a full picture of who a wide receiver is outside of uh, just typical production. So how do you do that? Are you giving guys grades or like, are you like doing the PFF thing where it's like, Oh, this is uh, like, what what does it look like? Is it a report? Is it like, uh, you know, so I just curious how that, that product looks. Yeah, I wouldn't say quite uh, the PFF thing, but for me, um, I'm just going in and again, charting whether uh, in my estimation they get open or not, right? So it's kind of like a, a, a pass fail type of thing. And then we're also, uh, it's just me doing all the charting work too. So it's not a team of people. I try to be super transparent with my process and and again, not not like, no shade to anybody else, but again, just it's just me doing the work, going in, uh, and and all the data is on the site too. Everything that I chart, it's it is a paywall site. You know, there's three tiers of subscription and everything like that. But um, again, th- th- I'm trying to just show you exactly what I'm doing from like a how often they run the slant route, how often I think they're getting open on the slant route versus man zone press, uh, contested catch after the catch performance. So really, there's no kind of grading. There's no. Um, it's very it's not black and white obviously because football is not black and white there's a lot of gray area there uh but for me all the data is presented on the site there's no kind of like magic formula so like how do you compare receivers then if there's no like consistent metric is it just kind of like you're trying to give your perspective on each individual person and like kind of give a report in addition to the data and or is there something else going on no no i mean everybody is charted with the same rubric right i just wouldn't Mm -hmm. say that there's like a grade to it so um everybody is again it's it's every metric that is on the site is is the same for every receiver that's being charted uh it's just again like i I wouldn't there's nothing like going into a grade right like no formula or something like Mm -hmm. that it's just i'm charting again just every route that they run how often they run each route type where they line up pre-snap are you off the ball are you on the line are you outside left are you outside right are you in the slots so everybody's being charted the same way um i just again I just probably i were we're getting talk, caught up on the pff thing just because there's no like grade to it if that makes sense I see yeah so so it's like terry mclaurin runs a slant route from the right flanker position x percent of the time right he gets open right. x percent of the time yeah, it's, it's just uh each individual play pass fail that's a percentage. If you want to call it a grade, it's a grade, but there's no actual formula to it. Like yeah, the, the metric com- is the metric is success stuff. rate versus co- like man coverage, success rate versus right. press coverage, success rate. So again, the success so, is yeah, okay. did, yeah, did you get open right. or not? Not like a he's a you know two point five or a one point five or something like that. But everybody's just kind of buck it's it's bucketed and categorized in the same way. Gotcha. So that brings us to 
Terry McLaurin, uh, Josh, uh, gosh, I just went Josh Dawson back in the day. So we were just talking about old football stuff, Logan, before you hopped on and we started recording here. Uh, Jahan Dotson, uh, and then obviously Curtis Samuel, the the three big receivers here in DC. Let's let's start with Terry because there's been so much consternation locally about his lack of targets, his lack of production this year relative to what I, so many of us thought he would be based off what he's been in the past. If you try to take him kind of. I want to say out of context, but you you try to really look at him on his own, comp, you know, and try to take some of the QB play, some of the schematic stuff out of it. How would you describe the season that Terry McLaurin is having? Yeah, so for context, like I've been a huge fan of Terry McLaurin. He's been like a, a reception perception superstar for a long time. I think he's a really good player. I've always been a big fan of him as a route runner, as a separator. Um, especially against man coverage. And, and he's sort of that in, in this offense and in the previous offense, he's been that consummate X receiver. And, you know, those guys typically, they're going to threaten you vertically. They're going to beat man coverage. And I think Terry McLaurin has been that guy for a long time. I, th- I think he's been... I think he's been great in isolation this year. When you just watch him play, I think he gets open and separates maybe not to, I would say his best seasons in, in reception perception were 2020 uh, and 2021. I wouldn't know. I wouldn't say he's necessarily getting open to that level, but I mean, I don't see a lot of flaws in his game from a separation standpoint. You know, there's been some issues maybe at times, but I don't, I don't have any, like, I don't think he is the problem with the lack of targets, I guess is the long and short of it. I mean, that's interesting because, like, when you look at some of the other services out there, you know, they always say that he's not a great he's not a great separator in like yards from defender. Like, how yeah. do you kind of counter that perspective from these different services? See, I don't know that. And again, this is just my opinion. I don't think there is a big difference of like, okay, you're open by you know three yards or four yards. Like, right, you're either presenting a quality target or not. Now, there's a difference, obviously. I mean, not to take a shot at Washington's defense, but when you're open by like. 100 yards like Cooper Cup, right, <laughs> on this past <laughs> right. Sunday, that obviously is going to create an easier throw than if you're open by three, two yards, whatever. I don't uh, really get into the, like, 2.5 yards of separation, three yards of separation, stuff like that. I think, like, I'm trying to put more emphasis on the process of, of route running and, and, like, what you're doing to set up defenders and what you're um, doing to get yourself open as opposed to just, like, are you this far away from the nearest defender? That's interesting, too, because I feel like, Logan, that would then – kind of go into some of the timing stuff and, and throwing with anticipation and some of the stuff that Sam at times has struggled with this year in terms of actually getting Terry the football. It's like if he presents a quality target, the more separation he gets, the longer that that target is going to be open. But if Sam throws with the anticipation that he's been lacking at times, then, you know, kind of Matt's formula does explain sure. the lack of production, right? And I think that's the thing I was trying to get out there is because like with, you know, I think not all separation is created equal. Like you are open, right? Like let's say you're a big tight end and you've, and the guy's draped on your back. Like uh, Rob Gronkowski is a great example, right? He is open mm-hmm. kind of all the time just because of his physical stature and how his body presence is to the football. Um, but I do think like with a young quarterback, there is something to this like quantification of the separation you are creating, which is why I asked if that was something that you charted. And I understand from a strictly receiver standpoint, if you're open, you're open. But I also think from a quarterback perspective, it's a different, it's a different point of view because like, you know, I think, um, perfect example was, uh, I was talking to Rex Grossman. This was like in 2010 or something like that. And he was like, I like throwing to big receivers because you can see them and because they're always open as opposed to a little guy who you can't really see. And like Terry's not the biggest guy. And so I need to see a more definitive amount of separation. So even though it's like this, this thing where it's like, yes, it's a quality target. He's open, like because of his stature, because of the route concept, like what does that look like when presenting to the quarterback, which is why I brought up the other metric. I'm not being critical of of your of your process because I think it's oh, sure. true when you're just looking at receivers. But when you're looking at it from a quarterback perspective, I think it's it's important to give that some context as well. A hundred percent. And I would say too, when when you're looking at other metrics, it's like when are you measuring that yes that yeah. separation too? Like is it at the quarterback release point? Is that is it at the top of the drop? Right? Because I mean, different offenses are going to require different things. I mean, the great example right now is Dallas. You know, Dak has been not not this past Sunday, but right like getting the ball out as soon as he hits the top of his sure. drop. And and different receivers are going to re- going to require 
um, different points where they're going to be open in that route and you need to sync all that stuff up. And that's really different, like from an, a timing and anticipation standpoint, I always come back to, you know, it, it's funny when you spend so much time studying receivers, you're inherently obviously spending a lot of time with the quarterback as well. And there are some quarterbacks that really, like you said, Logan, that's perfectly, perfectly said, like some guys want to see it and rip it. Right. As opposed to other guys can anticipate it. And that's going to be expressed with different receiver types. Uh, Brandon Ayuk with San Francisco right now. I think Purdy is great at playing on time. He's great with playing. I think he throws with great anticipation. Previous quarterbacks in that offense haven't necessarily done that. So you had, didn't see him getting unlocked from a production standpoint. Mm -hmm. I think you see Purdy back there and he's actually elevated and like a uh, perfect example from, I think it was the Dallas game. I think it was actually called back. The route was a corner route. It was deep towards the sideline. Like Jimmy Garoppolo is never making that throw. It's just yeah. not the type of throw he likes, but Ayuk has always been great running these outbreaking routes. So you see, again, just different type of quarterbacks can unlock other receivers that maybe they wouldn't have in different situations. So I think that kind of perfectly, perfectly brings us to Jahan because the chemistry between Jahan and, and Sam has not really been there this year. We, I mean, we anticipated a monster year from Jahan. Yeah. I think we both preseason were like, this dude could lead the team in receptions. He yeah. could push 100 catches this year. With the training camp he had, he looked incredible such a great route runner. But as we've watched the film this year, Logan has, has remarked on sometimes the timing is really off for him. We're like, he'll get open, but I needed you open a half a second ago because you, you triple stick to the top of your route and now Sam's getting sacked or having to move off you somewhere else. When you watch Dotson, what have you seen? Yeah, so I'm with you guys that coming into this year, I expected big things from Jahan Dotson. and I really liked him as a prospect. In different circles, like that pick was criticized when he was taken mm -hmm. in the first round. I, I thought he was a first round pick. I thought he was so a great prospect coming into coming into the league. Like, and he hasn't. He has had some drop issues this year, and actually, even as a rookie, he had drop issues. But I said he had the best hands in that class uh, coming in from Penn State. Uh, would make incredible plays with Sean Clifford down the field, where he was. You know, that was a, a very erratic quarterback, uh, you know, would kind of throw him into contested situations down the field and he would have the hands to go up and get it. Thought he was a great zone beater. And then you look at him as a rookie in reception perception. I, I was kind of surprised, actually, that they used him so much outside as a rookie, but he was great mm. against press coverage. 87th percentile success rate versus press in his rookie season in reception. Is right there in terms of the barometers you want to your receiver to hit against man and zone coverage. I was really excited about him this year too. So I've also been disappointed uh, in the lack of production this year. I think the chemistry and timing stuff is a good perspective on this because I think it's actually kind of gotten worse as the year has gone on too, which is really disconcerting because I thought in maybe, and maybe this is a good point too. I thought that early on in the season, he was playing extremely good football in isolation. Like he was cutting guys up. He was getting open against man coverage. The ball wasn't necessarily coming his way. Um, and then really like you've seen him sort of, I think regress as the year has gone on, like his best stuff was at the beginning of the season. I think it's tapered off towards this back half of the season. And maybe that is like, I, I don't know what that is, right? I don't know the explanation to that, but, uh, maybe some of the timing and chemistry issues are a part of it. Yeah. And I also think like with him, like, you know, you mentioned stylistically how guys are a little bit different, you know, I think finding stuff that speaks to players skill set like you mentioned Brandon Ayuk and how he's able to do some some kind of different stuff you know like he feels really good on out breaking routes um and then finding stuff that speaks to what Jahan does well you know like as we talked about like last year he did that such a good job with that kind of short post and the double stick at the top versus mm -hmm. quarters breaking inside and you had a guy um in Taylor Heineke and Carson Wentz even who felt very comfortable throwing that and I'm not sure that that route's been explored in this offense to the same level and I also think like you know speaking to what Sam does well, like does he see the middle of the field great? And I feel like that's kind of some stuff that Jahan does better. So it's it's like this weird bounce. Do you have a like a metric or an understanding for quantifying the quarterback or is it just strictly receivers at reception perception? So I focus strictly uh, on receivers. We actually this offseason brought in Derek Klassen who charts quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so he does work on quarterbacks. There obviously was not a lot to go on on Sam Howell from his first <laughs> season. Uh, he, no, he didn't play until week 17. But um, I think both of us, uh, you know, when Derek and I have talked about this, I do think that we kind of have more issues with the offense than the players uh, themselves. Sure. 
you know, I think this offense is, I'm actually curious what you guys think about the enemy's offense this year, because I, I think when I watch it, I've been frustrated with, with certain parts of it, but I, I agree with your point about like the lack of the middle of the field usage. It does feel like everything is really hard in this offense where like we're asking these guys and Jahan specifically to run these like you know, deep curl and deep comeback routes along the sideline, along the boundary. And he's, he's really good at getting open against those routes. Um, but at the same time, like that was some of his best, best stuff as a rookie from a success rate standpoint. But I do think that asks a lot of your quarterback to consistently hit these like downfield routes at times.